Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. Please forgive me for what you're about to see me do. Now that being said, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, now it seems that the Burger Kings in Japan have actually come out with a burger they call Kuru. Now that means black in Japanese. They have two burgers, the Black Pearl and the Black Diamond. Black Pearl has basically a black bun, black cheese, uh, black like an onion jam, and the burger's been seasoned with black pepper. Black Diamond is basically the same burger but only has lettuce and tomato and onion and all that jazz. Anyway, I'm making the Black Pearl. I just think it looks wild, just that jet black burger. I'm not really making this with the intent of saying, hey guys, make this burger. It's more of a challenge to myself and I'm just sort of bringing you guys along on the ride. So anyway, let's start with this black bun. Now I did a lot of research online trying to find recipes for black buns. Um, I found one blog, it's called The Brown Eyed Chef, and she does a lot of Japanese cooking. And so this is a Japanese burger, it's gonna work out fine. She actually did this bread in her, like a roll and she turned it black using bamboo charcoal, which is what they're using in Burger King. So let's start off with two and a half cups of bread flour. Just put that in the bowl here. This is three tablespoons plus two teaspoons of caster sugar. Now here in the US, we call it baker sugar, but it's just a really finely ground cane sugar. We're gonna start off with one tablespoon of that food grade bamboo charcoal. And I found this stuff online, it's readily available online. Two teaspoons of active dry yeast, one teaspoon salt. Going to go ahead and get this all mixed up. And if this isn't black enough for me, then I'm going to add a little bit more of that charcoal. I don't want a gray bun. And it is looking just sort of gray, these dry ingredients. So I'm adding one more tablespoon, see what happens. That's looking better. I'm sure it will darken up a bit too as it bakes. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. And the next step will be to add our wet ingredients. We're gonna add them in a separate bowl, whisk them together. I have here one half cup of whole milk one large egg, three tablespoons of room temperature butter that I've cut up into little like dices, I guess. Throw those in here. I know I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this next ingredient, but it's what the Japanese call Tang Sung. Sorry, Japan. Basically what it is, it's a five to one ratio, five parts water, one part of the bread flour. And what they do is mix it up really well, heat it up, and you're basically just getting all that gluten going and you're thickening it up. We're gonna add that in here. This is 120 grams. I just measured it, we're using their table. All right, we're gonna go ahead and whisk this together. All right, and these ingredients are pretty well mixed up. Butter still needs to break down a little bit, but I'm sure the mixer will handle that. Set this off the side. Let's go ahead and bring that mixer back into play here. All right, what I'm gonna do now is just make a, like a well in the middle of this, the dry ingredients here. That's what I'm gonna pour the wet ingredients into. Get the old dough hook on. Put this on low for a little bit. Basically what I'm looking for is a very kind of elastic -y, almost like a pizza dough. All right, the dough is pulling away from the walls now cleanly, and it's wrapped around that dough. It looks very, very elastic-y. <laughs> looks like tar. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and put this in a greased bowl now. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is cover this with some cling wrap and just let it set at room temperature. I wanna proof this. We're gonna let it rise to about double its current size. In the meantime, we're gonna start making the black cheese. See you in a bit. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is make that black cheese. Now I found a recipe online. It was for kind of like a processed cheese. I'm gonna post all these recipes down below, by the way. 
but we're gonna tweak this, make it our own, make it black. So we're gonna start out with 12 ounces of shredded Colby cheese. It's about three cups of cheese here. This is finely shredded. All right, the next ingredient is going to be one tablespoon of powdered milk. Now the recipe is actually calling for powdered whole milk. It's saying that it does make a difference. I couldn't find it. I'm guessing you have to order it. So I will, I made a little change to the recipe that I think will help. So anyway, I'm gonna add that in here. Next ingredient is going to be 1 8 teaspoon cream of tartar and 1 teaspoon salt. So we're going to go ahead and just pulse this together, about three quick pulses. All right, that was more than three. All right, the next ingredient is going to be 1 half cup whole milk with an additional two tablespoons of that whole milk. Now, since I did not have the whole powdered milk, what I've done is I have here one half cup of whole milk with an addition of two tablespoons of cream. And I'm hoping that extra milk fat will kind of remedy the problem of not having that whole powdered milk. What I'm gonna do now is boil this and add one teaspoon of gelatin, non-flavored gelatin that I've mixed with about a tablespoon of water, I've dissolved it with the water. So I'm gonna do that off camera. Basically, I'm just gonna bring it to a boil and whisk this gelatin in, and then I'm gonna add it to this, so I'll see you in a little bit. All right, I have the hot milk with the dissolved gelatin in here. Let me get this going. Food processor on. I'm going to add this milk gelatin mixture slowly into the food processor. Now what I'm going to add is, I have about a couple teaspoons of squid ink. All right. <laughs> Look at that, guys. It's pretty gnarly. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next procedure in this cheese thing here. All right, what I have here is a glass loaf pan, and I've coated it with oil. Now, on the, on the website, the gentleman that made this processed cheese, he used a disposable loaf pan and lined it with plastic lining. I think this will maybe even be a little better. I don't know. We'll see getting ink all over my hands here. This is not clean. So what I'm gonna do is get this into the loaf pan. You know what I'm gonna do is go ahead and place this because it is firming up. I'm gonna go ahead and just cram it into the edge of this pan and that way I'll be able to kind of slice more of a like a cheese slice off of it rather than just molding a slice of cheese. So like I said, I'm guessing the reason he used a disposable pan is he used one of the little guys. But this is already sitting up really good here. All right. Should I? Yeah, tastes kind of like cheese whiz. All right, what I'm going to do is cover this in cellophane, put it in the fridge. All right, guys, so in the spirit of keeping this video length below an hour long, I've opted not to videotape certain things. The cheese turned out great, it's set up in the fridge. I sliced it, you'll get to see the cheese when I do the cook. The, uh, I made the onion garlic jam really good. It's basically just a reduction and there is some squid ink here that give it the black color. I have the dough, it's been proofed. It's on this flour counter. I went ahead and deflated it already. This is the part I'm worried about, so I just wanted to focus on this. So we're gonna go ahead and make those bread rolls now, the hamburger buns. Not really sure how large to make these just because I don't know what to expect as far as if, if the charcoal is going to affect the yeast or anything. So I'm going to make different sizes and I'm sure I only want one burger. I'm sure I'll get at least one right. And I, again, I went ahead and it's pretty darn black. I went ahead and coated this with you know, flour. Putting this on a just a cookie sheet and I put 
parchment on here. It's a nonstick cookie sheet, but I wanted to give that contrast with these are black. Now, I have my oven preheated for 350 degrees. These are going in the oven. You don't need to see that. I'm going to start checking in about 15 minutes. I'm not really sure how long they're going to take the bake. I'll let you know. So I'll see you as soon as these buns are done. Fingers crossed, guys. All right. The bread is done. It actually smells insane. I mean, it smells really good. I did learn a lesson, however. Again, I wasn't quite sure of what to expect as far as how big these rolls were going to get as they baked. I wish I would have made them just a little bigger. What I'm ending up with now is a small cheeseburger or a big slider. So they're definitely smaller than I wanted to you know, have. But I'm not worried about it. All in all, this is kind of an experiment for me and I think it's turning out good. So if you decide to try this recipe, just make sure you make the buns, the dough balls a little larger than I did. But anyway, these are pretty hot right now, but we're, I'm going to go ahead and show you the inside. Look at that. Still steaming hot. This is the one that had all the flour on the outside, so I'm sacrificing this one. This is the most, like the nicest one as far as the, you know, being round. So we're, we're going to be using that for the actual burger. And I've already tried this on one of the, the really small one. It tastes really good, actually. Now, there is a very, very slight graininess that you detect from that charcoal. I did double the Limbiana charcoal that the uh, blogger used, so I don't know if that's why, but I know charcoal is not going to dissolve. There, in some of the articles I read on the cheese, they're saying that bamboo charcoal is actually used in the cheese. I opted to go with the squid ink just because of this reason. I did not see, you know, in my mind as I thought of the bamboo charcoal, it breaking down and I didn't want a grainy cheese. So the, the squid ink actually worked perfect and it tastes, you know, like American processed cheese stuff. Anyway, I'm going to let these cool a little bit. I will meet you out at the grill where we're going to fire this thing up and make us a Kuru Black Pearl. See you in a bit, guys. All right, guys, everything's done. We're ready to make a Kuru burger now. Got the flat top preheated. First thing we're going to do is season this patty. Got to have a little bit of salt on my burger, so I'm going to go ahead and hit it with some salt. Then a decent amount of black pepper. Get that down on the flat top. More salt. More black pepper. All right, as you can see, you're getting some good color on the side. We're going to go ahead and flip this. Nice crust. That black pepper is really cooking off. I mean, it's I can really smell it. All right, guys, looking good. Smelling good. Again, that pepper is just really cooking off. Let's go ahead and make us a curry burger. All right, so first things first, got to lay that burger down. And this is 80-20 sirloin. Just I didn't mention that earlier. Now that freaky cheese that I made. And this onion, garlic, jam. And again, it's just a slowly reduced chopped onion and garlic jam with a little black soy sauce, like a couple teaspoons of black soy sauce and some black squid ink. And about a half a teaspoon of the black squid ink and also about a teaspoon of sugar. And here's that bun. I didn't show you. I think the inside. Pretty cool. Now I hit the surface of the bun with just a little bit of clarified butter to kind of give it that shine like they have in that little promo picture. And I know the patty's a lot thicker than Burger King would use, but I figured I'm going through all this trouble. I want a burger that I want to eat, I think. I don't know if I want to eat it, but we're going to give it a shot. <laughs> it's frightening looking, I'll tell you that. But individually, everything tastes pretty decent. So let's give this a go here. You know, as far as the flavor is concerned, it's just a really basic cheeseburger. Nothing special about it. The cheese, it does taste like that processed 
you know, quote, American cheese, that kind of cheap stuff. Um, I really like that, the, the relish that I made. It tastes pretty darn good. You don't taste any weird fishiness from the squid ink or anything. And uh, all in all, I'm pretty darn happy with it. I mean, it's freaking weird looking. But all in all, I'm glad I did it. And thank you guys for joining me on this journey. Please, when you're hovering over those thumb up, thumb down button, trying to figure out what to hit, I know it's gnarly looking, but a lot of work went into this, so I'm hoping for the entertainment value alone. Thumbs up. Anyway, guys, thanks again for stopping by my channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you to my wife for putting up with this mess that I just made in the kitchen. Cheers. <laughs>